In this video, we are going to be going over the live stream features of Google Meet uh, to be used with your classes. And hopefully what this can do for you is, is alleviate some of the headaches of trying to use Google Meet with too many students at once. It gets pretty chaotic in there. And um, this also allows you to have feedback in almost real time with your students as they're sending in questions over material that you're working on. So we'll walk through those features and uh, how to get that set up for your class. So I'd first like to explain why using this feature of Google Meet would be more beneficial than just how it typically is used where you just video conference with students. Um, the video conferencing feature works really well with like one-on-one -on -one help and if you or maybe just a small group of students. But if you have, um, you know, upwards of, like for my class, I have 120 some students that are in AP Physics. I can't get them all in there at once. And also anytime you do groups of more than, <clears throat> you know, I'd say any groups more than five, it quickly devolves into them just making kind of funny faces in their videos at each other, uh, turning mics on and off. And, um, and it's just not the best learning environment. So what I uh, have found is that using the live stream version of Google Meet allows me to have a lesson that is um, that I, they can tune in and they can actually watch it later if needed. And um, but then they can also get their questions answered live from me during that session. So I'm going to show you how to set that up and uh, we'll, we'll walk through the steps of setting up a live stream in Google Meet. OK, so to set up a live stream event, uh, what we're going to do is instead of going to <clears throat> Google Meet, uh, like on the app or on the website, we're actually going to go into your calendar and create an event. So you click on whatever day you intend to do this lesson. And I'm just going to shoot for Saturday, let's say. Um, you tile it whatever you want. So we'll just call this uh, test one. And you'll go down to more options. When you click more options, you can change the, um, the time and things like that. You can change location if you want it. You can add a description of what this is going to be. But I'm going to add in the option of adding a conference, a Google Hangout Meet. Once you do this, it creates a link to a Google Hangout Meet. And that's, uh, that's good, but that's not, um, that's not actually what the students are going to go to because that would be the same as them just joining in and then they'd all be in there at once and they'd have a limit on how many video feeds and mic feeds that they could handle. Instead, when you click the little down arrow, <clears throat> we can add this option for add live stream. When you click on that, uh, it creates this link for anyone that clicks that will have a view only right to the meet. And so um, what they would do is you can handle thousands of people technically logging into this link, whoever you want to send it out to. And then the students could live stream uh, just by watching the video feed and then asking their questions through Google Chat, which I'll kind of show you how to set that up um, soon. All right, once you do that, then you're just going to go ahead and click Save. And this creates the event, um, although that doesn't really, um, that's not actually what they're going to click on. That's not the link that you're going to send out. You have to create the event first and then you go back in and edit that same event. So once it's made, I'll show you all the information about it and you click edit. Uh, you go up to more actions and you can create a view only event for your students to watch. Now this is what's going to give the option of having um, many, many students in there at once. So they can all see what's happening live and um, then get their questions asked through a Google chat off to the side. So I click save. I don't think there's anything else I need to do with that. You could copy this link at this time, but we can do that later. But I'll click save. And then you see in my calendar, now I have the test that I actually made. This is the, the real event. And then this is the live stream link to the event. So. If you only have a select number of students that you want to um, go to this live stream, you could just send them out individual emails um, and in invites through the edit when you add people off to the side. So you can type in their names as guests um, or you can just provide that link that's listed there. So if you copy that link, you can then dump that into the Google chat room, which is what I'll show you next. 
All right, so the basics of running the meeting then, uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go down to your original event that you created, not the live stream. The live stream link is only gonna be for the students to view. Uh, and remember that doesn't allow them to have mic access or camera access. You want the actual event where it'll have a link to the join Hangouts meet. So you're gonna run the meet and uh, you click that to get that started. And once it pops up here, I'm actually gonna mute my camera and audio just so we don't interfere with this. But um, when you click join now, uh, you know, you would show up here, but we have to do a few more things to get started. Your students won't be able to see this live stream until you click start streaming. They're gonna be using the link. If they were to click the link right now, they would just see a thing that says the stream hasn't started yet. So they wouldn't see any of this organization in the background. So I tend to get myself set up <clears throat> in the few minutes beforehand, getting materials that I need and I can have it on and I'm not worried about students logging in like seeing me. Um, you know, getting a cup of coffee in the background or something like that. So I can still, um, even if the camera's on me right now, um, as long as I don't click start streaming, they wouldn't see my screen. So to get started, you're gonna click more options. You're gonna record the meeting. That way anyone that is, you know, watching this later, that's not in a synchronous setting, they could still view the lesson and then they could ask their questions later. Uh, but they would just watch it uh, posted in Google Classroom or some other YouTube link. Uh, but we're going to click Start Streaming. Oops, um, sorry, we're going to click Record Meeting. Let's get that recorded first. It's going to ask if you um, asked all your students for their consent, and we'll say yes. And then um, we'll start streaming. So it asks if everyone's okay with this. If you had other collaborators in there, um, you'd have to kind of see if they're they're good to go and up in the top you see that's being recorded and it's set to be live streaming so anyone with the link <clears throat> could now be watching me run my lesson and we could handle as many people as we want in this in this environment so let me show you how i've been managing the live feedback or close to live feedback uh, off to the side so this meeting would be running and um i would have made up a Google chat room already with my class. And so the unfortunate part is making up a new chat room. I haven't found a way to just <clears throat> add in all the students from a class at once. So instead you'd have to, um, we're sorry, we're frozen here. Uh, instead of what you'd have to do is um, type them in manually. So you'd go to create room and um, title it whatever you want. Let's call it Test Room 2. And once you've created that room, um, the first thing that I would post in there is kind of the ground rules. And so um, letting people know that in that thread, uh, anything they're saying is being, is we have a record of, and so let's stick to all um, productive comments and so just trying to, to deter the kids just having side conversations and inappropriate things posting pictures and stuff like that the only messages that should be coming through on the thread should be questions to the teacher about what they're covering so i gave a little message about like here's the ground rules for using this and then you can add in all those people um add in all those people individually um by just typing in their names and then you send them out an email inviting them to that chat room. So all of this I would set up beforehand, like the, the chat room for the class and the, um, you know, maybe the ground rules so that everyone kind of knows what's happening. Uh, I kind of preset this up a day in advance for my students before I was actually gonna try this. You wouldn't wanna do this right before you're starting your live stream. But once that chat room's there, it's nice to have another device like an iPad or an iPhone, just. Or, somewhere that you can be looking at the chats coming in while you're doing the recording from your computer. Um, but let's go back to the Google Meet. And um, and so I typically would have, if this was all I was doing, there's some other features of doing this with, a, um, with an iPad so that you're writing or a different device that you can see what's going on. But 
Uh, this is kind of how I have it set up where I'd have my chats coming in from them off to the side and then I would be doing my lesson uh, or just answering their questions individually, just kind of a ask the teacher session, however you wanted to run this live stream. So that's the basics. If you want the next step on how to integrate an iPad and uh, different devices in there, uh, watch the next video. Thank you. See you later.